So if we would like to solve this absolute inequality analytically, the first thing we always have to do for ourselves is isolate the absolute value bars. So don't forget this step, super important. We're gonna isolate this first and we do this by subtracting seven from both sides. Now, when we have this, we have the absolute value of two X plus one, um, less than three minus seven is negative four. Now I always pause after this step and I ask myself, what type of number is this constant? And I notice that I have a negative number here. So anytime you have a negative number after you've isolated the absolute values or you have zero, you kind of run into some special cases that you have to deal with. So this is a heads up that this will be a special case. That's what they call it. And so just be aware that you're not going to get a, a, a solution that um, generally we notice that when we have the less than symbol, we always think about the and, and a lot of times you, you, you have a pattern of what you think the answer is going to be. But in special cases, we have to be extremely careful. So I'll show you graphically, um, kind of keeping with the same technique I've been using for the first part of every example, and then we'll show you a shortcut from there. So um, once I figure it out, it's an and case, even if I didn't realize it was a negative number, um, I could approach this the same way where I am splitting everything up into two cases. Case one uh, being that you're dropping the bars. Everything else is the same. Uh, using the connector word and. And case two, you end up dropping the bars. You reverse the direction of your inequality and change the sign of the number. So it was negative four, it's now going to be positive four. You can solve these as is, no problem. Um, we're going to subtract one from each side. We have two X less than negative five. Uh, divide both sides by two, we get X is less than negative five halves. Um, don't forget the link word and. Um, same idea on the other case, subtract one from each side. We get 2x greater than 3. Divide both sides by 2. We get x is greater than 3 halves. So this kind of gives us an, a sample of our um, rough draft. Uh, we can now graph um, number line. And a lot of times you can write the numbers in comparison to each other. So if you notice, uh, negative is always going to be the left of the positive. So I know I have negative five halves right here. And that would give me the case that uh, three halves should be a little to the right. If you're both negative or they're both positive and you have issues with fractions, you may want to convert to decimal. So you're clear who's on the left, who's on the right. So if we're going to graph these linear inequalities, um, x is less than Negative five halves means we'd be shading to the left and we'd be using a parenthesis opening up to where we shade. And X is greater than three halves means we'd be shading to the right using a parenthesis opening up to the right. I really exaggerated that one a bit. So let's see, we have here. And now, um, don't be satisfied once you're done, we have to have our final graph. Um, the issue, we need to understand what are we taking in terms of the shading. So if you remember, um, we have the AND case. And AND says always take the intersection. In other words, what have you colored twice? When you look at it, do you see any overlap? There's a blue side, there's a green side, there's never a side where there's blue and green. So this tells me there is no intersection. And if there's no intersection, your graph would be blank, which means you have no solution. So if you wanted to write the solution, 
you would say there's not, not a solution. Or um, sometimes people write the null set. Either way is fine. So don't be um, tricked by the fact that, yeah, you can graph the solution, but really, it's the link word that really matters as to what part of the graph you'd be taking if you're taking anything at all. So that's kind of the idea of the special case. Now that we kind of have that idea, let me make sure. Um, if you see the special case ahead of time, um, you don't always have to go through this unless they're specifically asking you why. But remember, um, we were looking at 2x plus 1 is less than um, negative 4. The fact that you have a negative number and the fact that you talk about absolute value. Um, if you remember the definition of what absolute value means, absolute value talks about the distance from 0 to whatever's on the inside of the absolute value. But the key word I'm thinking about is distance. So if we talk about any sort of distance in our lives, um, we know that we can't have a negative distance. It does not make um, physical sense. So if you're describing this statement, absolute value of 2x plus 1 is less than negative 4, what you're really describing is you're really saying distance is less than negative 4. And you're saying, well, okay, so what? Well, um, if you're saying distance is less than negative four, give me any number less than negative four. So if you're negative four on a number line, um, you're on this side somewhere, negative five, negative 10, negative 20. Um, distance is less than negative four is you saying that distance is negative. And that is not a true statement. That's not, not feasible in real life. So this cannot happen. And so that's kind of the shortcut, the thought process around why there is no solution. So you don't have to really show work if you understand the situation. But you have to be careful. It does matter which way the inequality symbol is facing. You may see in some of the next examples, if the inequality was facing the other way, what would we say? We'll keep you hanging on. We'll see you then.